Welcome to the PPL Repertoire Registration Journey of Registering Recordings. This is one of a series of tutorial videos produced to help guide you through the Register Repertoire system. All of these videos can be located on My PPL and the Register Repertoire landing page, which can be found by logging into My PPL. In this video, you'll learn how to register an individual recording. This video will be beneficial if you are seeking to register one recording at a time. This process applies to the registration of both a sound and a video recording. You will be able to select this type within the recording journey. To get started, go to the Register Repertoire landing page by logging into My PPL and clicking on Register Repertoire. On the left hand side are a series of options that enable you to set up default data once that you can then use later to speed up the process. It is recommended that you set up defaults before proceeding with registering a recording. To start with the registration journey, click on the Register a Recording tile. If you manage more than one account, you may be presented with a screen to select a data source. If this is the case, select the appropriate data source from the drop down list and click Confirm. PPL uses the data source to determine who has submitted the data to PPL, as it might differ from who owns the rights. In most cases, you will not see this screen, and you will automatically be presented with three options to begin your registration journey. These are I want to use my saved defaults, I want to clone a previously registered recording, and I want to start a new recording registration. In this video, we will go through the first option and use a previously saved default. You can select from any of your saved defaults by either searching for the name you have saved them as or by selecting a favourite default, which will always appear in the drop down list. You will immediately notice that the journey is made up of five steps through which you will be required to provide the relevant information for your recording 1. General information about your repertoire, 2. Rights information, 3. Recording specific information, 4. Performer lineups, and finally, 5. A review of the information you have provided. Please note that the mandatory fields are marked with a star. You must complete these in order to successfully register your recording. Many here are already pre filled because they were set up as part of the defaults section. If at any point you are unclear as to what information is required, Please hover over the on screen tooltips for an explanation. Please complete the fields as required, providing as much information for the non mandatory fields too. Once completed, click Next. The system will perform a validation on the information you have provided, and, if any errors occur, an error message will be displayed at the top of the page, indicating all of the errors found on the screen. You have the opportunity in real time to amend and or provide new information before proceeding. If you do not have this information to hand, you can proceed through the subsequent screens by clicking Proceed Anyway. However, you will not be able to submit the recording until all the mandatory fields have been completed. Moving on to the next step, Rights. When you click on Add Rights Holder, you will be asked to provide rights information for the recording. Required information includes the right holder's name or PPL ID, the type, the start date, percentage, and territories. When selecting the territories, you can either search for a previously created territory default to help speed up the process, or continue to manually choose countries from the list below. To create a new territory default, return to the Register Repertoire landing page and click on Create a Territory Default. If you have previously marked the default as a favourite, this would have been selected when creating the default, it will automatically display in the drop down menu. Click on the Action button and select Edit to edit an individual rights holding. If you want to remove the rights holder information entirely, you can do so by clicking the Action button and Remove. If you do not own the rights to the recording, please click on I do not own the rights to this recording. Once you've completed the fields, click Next to move to the next step of recording information. Please complete the details of the recording, taking extra care to complete the mandatory fields. Again, the on screen tooltips are there to help you understand what is required. As you scroll down, you'll notice a section called Works. 
This is a new feature where we provide an opportunity for you to link your recording to the underlying musical work in the PRS for Music database. You can search for the musical work manually, or, if the system has automatically suggested a match, they will appear in a list in the table below. Accept or reject the suggested work as appropriate. Confirming the link between your recording and the musical work will help PPL and PRS for Music work together to improve the quality of data about copyright across the industry. Click Next to move to Performer Lineups. It is important that we capture the performers who played on the recording you are registering. We would always encourage you to provide as much performer lineup data as possible. On joining PPL, and in accordance with PPL's published rules and policies from time to time, recording rights holders agree to regularly provide details of all recording artists, performers, named on sound recordings issued by the member. This is to ensure that performers, who have a legal right to receive equitable remuneration from the owner of the copyright in the sound recording, can be fairly remunerated for their work. The first thing to note about this page is that you have the opportunity to use a previously saved performer lineup. The first thing to do is tell us how many unique featured and non-featured performers played on the recording. Please note that a performer who plays more than one instrument should only be counted once. You will then need to provide the individual details of each performer in the table below. If you input, for example, 12 featured performers here, you'll be asked to provide the names and details for each of these performers. You can add to the table by clicking Add Featured Performer. The same process applies to non-featured performers, studio personnel, such as engineers or a performing ensemble name, and composers. Please refer to the Style Guide for more information. To help speed things up, you can bulk apply information by selecting the appropriate performers and then updating them with the drop-down options such as making the flagged performers contracted featured artists. Note that your performer lineups are linked to your data source, and so searches will only bring back those defaults associated with the current data source on behalf of whom you are registering. Once you have completed the information, click Next to move to the final step in the registration process, Review. This page summarizes all the information you have provided for the individual recording and indicates where there are still gaps against the mandatory fields. You can edit directly from the review page by clicking on the relevant section and it will take you back to the appropriate step in the journey. The Submit button will become available to you when all mandatory information has been provided. Click Submit to send the recordings to PPL. Once you have submitted the recording, it is not possible to edit it again until it has been registered successfully in the PPL repertoire database. If you would like to review your recording at a later stage, you may do so by navigating to Manage Repertoire from the Register Repertoire landing page. If you want more information on how to register your releases, upload recordings in bulk, or manage your repertoire, please watch these video guides or refer to our user guides, which can be found on My PPL or the Register Repertoire landing page.